Welcome once again. This is the lecture number five of the. Artificial intelligence course in this particular session, we are going to continue our discussion on the search methodologies. So, and uh, in the last class we have seen that uh, there are various very interesting methods that you can utilize to find out the solution. So uh, the basic idea was um, this that uh, if you uh, if you can define the graphical way that what the particular problem is using the state space and its transition diagram. Then you can start from any state and that is we can call the initial problem state and find out that which is the final state. How can we find out the root on that? So let us start by the, our discussion uh, and uh, please participate in asking the question. So this is the map of Romania on which actually we were talking about that there is just there is some agent who want to go from Arad to uh, Bucharest and for this he is going to do something. OK, so we have seen in the last class that one method uh, could be that um, where there is no information available is uh, DFS and BFS. That part we have seen. OK, in the last class we have seen that DFS is one method and. Uh, BFS is one method, so we have seen this particular thing. Also, we have seen in the last class that what is the uniform cast search? So what happens that actually if whenever uh, we from a we we had the understanding that we have a graph. From this graph, we create a tree and tree is going to tell that what are the things we are going to we are going to explore next and this is called the frontier. So we are actually advancing this frontier. So whenever we, uh, from the frontier, I take something and include few more things, then this becomes a frontier. So we are going to advance the frontier. So how to advance the frontier? This is what the question is. So uniform caster says that that I am going to implement a kind of queue. So it is a priority queue and the minimum value is going to be taken out and how to do that we have done it this into the last class. If you compare the DFS and uh, BFS, so what happens that the BFS actually goes in this particular way that the sequence are for example, if this is the tree DFS goes first sees this particular item, then this item, then this item and then this item. So what happens that if you, let's assume that uh, you have developed a tree and your solution is here, so you would be able to reach this solution because uh, because you are going to go into this particular way. After some time you would be able to hit this particular thing. But we have seen that there are few settings where this particular uh, bottom part is actually open. What do I mean by this? That it is something because it may be possible that infinite space, uh, infinite uh, number of states are possible. So in those kind of setting, what what would happen? That if you start instead of BFS, if you apply DFS, depth per search, so depth of space goes in in and in in and in. So what would happen? That this even if there is a solution, the system would not be able to return back from this particular path. So this is a big issue to solve this particular issue. The, there was a suggestion that is a go for the depth limited search in, in this example. What is said in this method? What is said that you use some value L and you don't go beyond this particular thing. So what is going to be something like that that you are going to specify that L is the length and uh, when you are going to hit this particular uh, uh, depth, then you come back and you find out the things like that. So uh, you, you can you can by yourself think that if the solution is here somewhere, then definitely you would be able to find out even if the space is of the infinite uh, exploration possible, if, even if the infinite exploration is possible. Uh, in this particular setting, however, there is an issue. You can say that how to find out this particular value of L because L, if you set the value of L in into the wrong way and you say that I'm going to search into this particular area only where this is now, this is the value of L, then you would not be able to find out the solution. So this, however, this is a good, good thing, good approach that makes DFS uh, now complete that it can find out the solution, but it has inherent issues. Make sense? Uh, so the next uh, method says that iterative deepening. It says that yeah, uh, you start from the very less depth and then you explore one by one, add more items one by one and try to see that uh, how good you can do. So it says that initially set the value of L to be zero and then one uh, one minute. Then initially you set the value of L to be zero, then one, then two. If you don't find something, so you keep increasing on in this particular way. OK. Uh, so you may be thinking, sir, what is this method? Because what what happens that initially, let's assume that you have uh, uh, you have you have searched to this particular point. Say I say that k depth, h depth. Okay, let's assume that you have done. Uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, so let's assume that 
and in a tree you have uh, l l is equal to 10 okay so you have searched all these points so at that particular time at that time you have searched all these points and you, you didn't find out the solution the then what the method is telling method is telling that make l is equal to l plus 1 means 11 and now you are going to search to now you are going to search to this particular depth okay this particular depth you are going to search to this particular depth uh, so you will be telling sir again if I start searching then again I would be searching these item once again so it becomes very uh, very very inefficient method that same item I'm going to consider multiple number of time but actually uh, your your things are right but actually what happens that uh, try to uh, try to just investigate that how many items are here try to see that how many items are here okay so let me give you the idea the idea is this that uh, idea is this let let's just uh, for the sake of uh, clarity let's take the binary search tree so how many items are there one item okay binary search there at the root there is one item in the next how many items are there there are two items okay the two item and in the next way in the next thing how many items are there there are four items so i can write something like that that this four is actually the summation of all the trees which is here plus one tree plus one so can you see this so this two is the summation of all the things one item plus one okay so if i want to find out that how many item would be here so you can see that the four item uh, i can say that this this four plus one no 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 i think i'm doing doing something wrong okay this summation of all the items plus one is going to be here okay so two item is there so this number one minute this number should be two plus one two plus one okay this number two plus one so it is three so what number here should come the summation of all these numbers four five six seven so it becomes four five six seven this seven plus one so if i say that i'm going to one dip more so how many items would be there you know that it okay next uh, next there would be 16 what is this 16 it is a summation of what all these numbers summation of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 plus 1 so if you if you see and you can extend this idea and you can tell that at whatever depth i want to find out that how many items are there they are summation of all the items which are actually up plus 1 so this actually says that most of the items are actually here only. So when you are actually extending whatever method, whatever search you have done here is actually going, not going to be much of the relevance. Uh, if you're not convinced with my uh, my idea, I can, uh, I can I sh we should also so use this particular method. You say that let's assume that we have a tree and uh, same binary tree and we are going to cut it at the half okay so i wanted to if i if you want to find out that how many items are here let me call it a and how many items are here let me call it b so uh, you know that um, if the trees of the depth uh, d so how many items are there okay so you know that uh, 2 4 8 16 so in the same way if i find out that this 16 is going to be the summation of summation of all the items over there plus one okay i was telling the summation of all the items plus one so i can say that this is that because you know that 2 to the power 16 is uh let's let me say that this is the high touch so how many items would be into this particular layer it is 2 to the power h okay you know that 2 to the power h number of items will be there so in this 2 to the power h are there how many are above 2 to the power h minus 1 items are there so it is total 2 into 2 to the power h minus 1 yani 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1 so roughly you can take that 2 to the power h plus 1 items are there in a tree that is of the height h okay make sense okay so if you are agreeing with me then you, you would be agreeing that what is if uh, let let me change this particular uh, scenario and ask this uh, solve this particular problem where i was telling that let's assume that depth is d so if the depth is d so then how many items are there 2 to the power d plus 1 these many number of items are there how many items are here in the upper place it is 2 to the power 2 to the power d by 2 plus 1 these many numbers of items are there okay can you compare that what can you compare that how many items are in these two numbers can you compare these two numbers so just try to see the difference let me just uh, let me just give you the idea that how many items are into this uh, newly created place how many items are there into the b okay let me find out that how many items are b 
So they are going to be the total number of item because total number of item is two to the power d plus one. How many items are here? They're two to the power d by two minus one. So if I want to find out how many items are there, I have to subtract these two numbers. Okay. So uh, how can you subtract? So this you can say that this number is actually two into two to the power d minus two into two to the power d by two. So you can take the two common and two to the two, two into two to the power d by two common. And you can say that it is 2 to the power d by 2 minus 1. Am I right? These many, <laughs> these many numbers are there. Okay. You compare you and how many items are there into A? A has these many number items that we have earlier talked about 2 to the power d by 2 plus 1. Okay. If you divide, if you divide B by A, you can find out what how many times this 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 side this is larger how many times this is larger so b by a is going to be so you know that this is the quantity okay so this is a 2 2 into 2 to the power d by 2 into 2 to the power d by 2 minus 1 divided by this particular quantity that is actually 2 to the power 2 to the power d by 2 so they are get cancelled and you can see that 2 to the power d by 2 minus 1 number of items are there into this particular place you can see if here is x item, here is x multiplied by 2 to the power d by 2 minus 1. And d is not a small number here. We are assuming d is a depth and that's a big number. So number of items which are actually into the b, that they are going to be too large. And that's why this iterative de uh, deepening, uh, deepening, idea of iterative deepening is not a very, um, very bad idea. It's actually fine idea because most of the time when you are actually increasing the depth, you are getting lot more item as compared to the previous item that actually you have done earlier. OK. Makes sense. What is the memory requirement again? Since you are going to apply the DFS in the DFS memory requirement is B to the power <coughs> B multiplied by D. Why? What is B? B is a branching factor and what is the depth? OK, so what happens that um, in here branching factor means how many items are there? Let's assume that B items are there. Then here also B items are there. So because all the items you are not expanding now into the tree, you are not expanding all the item. Every time when you started discovering first item, you got B items and then out of them one you are going to use. So B again more item, B more item. So if you go to the depth uh, D or H, so if you go to the depth D, so it is B multiplied by D item. Actually, you need to store into the uh, into your frontiers because these items you need to explore later. OK. So uh, what is the time complexity? Time complexity is because ultimately you have to evaluate all the items, so it is going to be B to the power D. Make sense. Any questions? Uh, that does it make sense? Everybody. Yes. Yeah. OK, <clears throat> so now. Now let us see another idea. That is a very interesting kind of idea. It says that in the graph, <clears throat> in the graph from here, you wanted to find out the path to a goal node. Okay, you want to go to the goal node. So actually, you are going to explore these many number of item, and this becomes a very big number. Okay, these many num items are you actually need to explore. Lot of items you have, you have to explore. What if you start exploring from the reverse direction? Means here also because you final state also you can some many other time you know that this is the for example into the water jug problem we know that um, in one cup uh, there is one liter another cup there is nothing so you can start from the backward and from the initial also you can start so initially also you start so somewhere you can see that you got some point that is into the both of them okay. You get some point which is into into the exploratory path of both of them. Then whenever you discover this particular point, you can do a short circuit and uh, you can you started from here. You explore these 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 items. You from goal you explore uh, explore these 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 items. But you find out that there is one point that is common. Then the thing is done. You can just find out that this is the path. By this, what is going to happen? Let's assume that both are the parts are actually executing in a you know, symmetric way. So if the depth is D, 
if the solution is at the depth d, so half need to be covered by the first one and half need to be covered by the second one. So total exploration is going to be 2 multiplied by b d by 2. So you can see that this number is very, very less as compared to, to uh, b, b to the power d. OK. Yes. So uh, the idea, uh, the small idea and uh, example is also given over here. And uh, that says that let's assume that uh, uh, if branching factor is t 10, let's assume the branching factor is 10 and the solution is uh, at the depth uh, 6. If the solution is at the depth 6, so here you are going to explore how much? 10 things. Then after that, 10 thing. After that, 10 thing. So initially you explore 10, then after 100, each of them are going to give me 10 more thing, then, then this much, then this much, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So total number of node that you are going to explore is this much. Okay. In the general kind of setting. But if you go into the bidirectional search, then in from the one direction, because you only go to the three depth and you'd be able to find out the a common point and then you, can, you would be able to reconstruct the solution. So what does it mean that if you go initially you have to explore 10, then 100, then 1000, then 1000 and after that and this other side also you have to explore 10 and then 100, then 1000. So you get uh, 1100, 1100 number of item you have explored. So total number of uh, I think I have written wrongly. So it is going to be one 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 zero one 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 zero. You have explored like this. Then two 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 zero number of nodes you need to explore as compared to this, which is a very large number. Make sense? Yes. OK, so this is the simple comparison and it says that uh, different kind of algorithm it is going to compare. So BFS um, here we have have a BFS, uniform cast, a DFS. So few, few things are there. For example, completeness. Completeness means finding out the answer. So uh, finding out the answer, you know that um, in case of the in, in, in case of the DFS and uh, depth limit search, you cannot find the answer. Sometimes that therefore it may be possible that you miss the answer. Why? Because you are telling because depth limit is telling what? That uh, it is telling that I'm going to use this particular depth only. If the solution is here, what would happen? If you don't know the right value of uh, D, you can set it up. So this is the problem. So they may give uh, not give the solution. Otherwise, all other methods are going to give you. And in the same way, if you want to find out what is the optimal, optimal means uh, if the solution is there, you want to give it into the lesser number of time. Okay, it's, it should not take the large uh, lot lot of time. So here, since these two are not going to get the um, solution, so they are not optimal. Otherwise, the things are optimal. What is their space and time complexity uh, that uh, we have discussed when the time when we were actually discussing the thing? So this is the again the same kind of thing. Any questions on that? Amit is asking what type of questions we can get in the exam. Definitely, we can get a graph on which you have to execute a particular kind of a strategy and show that what are the points, what are the points you are going to explore in every step. Amit, uh, yes, makes sir, sense. Uh, yes, but uh, like this slide itself is there, right? Or previously you have shown some algorithm. So whether we will be asked to write some algorithm or uh, Look, like uh, that, the exam uh, is going to be open book. So this example, these these algorithms are actually uh, in front of you, and we cannot expect that you are going to generate a new kind of algorithm most of the time because then it's it's a then it is not a uh, AI thing. It becomes very difficult kind of research problem. So we will not ask you to give a new kind of algorithm that we cannot ask. No, because otherwise it is it is going beyond the scope of this particular course. Okay. okay. You have to compare, prove these that how the space is in something like this, and the questions will be based on that. New algorithm cannot be asked. So, uh, so till now we have uh, we are actually whatever strategy we were having, they does not have any kind of information. Now let us see few other methods which are called the comes into the category of inform search and this is again a very new thing that I'm going to tell to you that 
new kind of searching algorithm we are going to discuss. Those algorithms have some kind of additional information. From where this additional information is coming right now, I'm not talking about this, but we will talk later into this session. OK, so some from some methods, some other information is coming and this information is available for every node. If you have a node, if you have a node N, then you can find out this particular information. This is the HN and I'm going to call this function as a heuristic function. OK, so what is the information for info in the inform search? There is extra information available. What is that information? H about the node. If you on the, are on the node, you have another information that is HN and. Uh, HN is the information that is available to you. Any questions on that? So uh, there is um, there is another function that is called the FN and that uh, that is actually mostly we use that how that um, how to proceed. Actually, FN is more general function, OK? And uh, it it also combines more things because you know that there, there, there is one thing is the map. OK, one thing is the map. And then thing that I'm going to give you some satellite information that is actually not available from outside. I'm going to provide some information that is not available inside your map. So this information which is not available uh, from outside uh, in the in the map is called the heuristic function. OK, then how to proceed earlier? You are proceeding based on what that what is the distances? So this was the FN. OK, how you are proceeding? So it may be possible that this FN could be the, this heuristic function only. It may also be possible or it can use something along with the along with the heuristic function. It can add something else. OK, so FN is a function that you are going to use to proceed. Once again, this FN could be heuristic function itself only also. OK, it may be possible that you are going to use heuristic function. And uh, then if you are if you, everybody understand this particular part, I have told only one thing that there is some more information available and I'm going to call it the heuristic function. What is this information? We are going to talk about this very soon. So <clears throat> let me discuss one strategy. Once again, the searching strategy, searching strategy called the greedy first search, greedy best first search algorithm. OK, so uh, let us assume that this heuristic function is going to is is something that tells that what is the distance of this particular city from the Bucharest? Let's assume that this information is also available. This information is also available. And here is this information. Somebody ha has given me a straight line dis distance to Bucharest. And uh, this is uh, this is actually this is the actually the information that is given to me. OK, so here if you see that the Arad is 366, so if you are into the Arad, if you so there is 366 kilometer. It is away from the uh, Bucharest. Uh, so Hirosova is 151. IAZ is uh, 226. So these these things are information. Let's assume that in somehow somebody has computed and provided this information to you. Make sense? OK, so uh, how this algorithm proceed? It says that since the state light dis different distance is given to me, then uh, definitely I would like to proceed into the place. Uh, if the three options are given to me, if I am into the Arad, I can see that three places are in front of me. So what were these three places? So just see, let me see that from the Arad. This is the na? from Arad, Zarin, Timisora, Sibu. So Zarin, Timisora, Sibu, Sibu. Zarin Timisora Zarin, where is Zarin? Hmm? Help me to find out. Zarin Timisora and uh, Sibu. Where is Timisora? Timisora and Sibu. So these are the three places. So uh, from the going, if you go three places, the distance to Bucharest remains what? 253 Sibu. Timisora is 329. Timisora Zarind is 374 Zarind. So can you tell me that which path I'm going to take? Definitely Cebu because it from there the distance to Bucharest is 253 kilometers only. I'm going to use this particular path. Any any confusion on that? So if I use this way, 
So this is going to be the best algorithm. I'm sorry. This is going to be the greedy best search algorithm. OK, so here this particular thing try to show the same thing that I was discussing from Arad. It says that distance is 366. Here three places are there. So CBUE is 253. Now you are going to explore the CBUE. You see that now the uh, spaces are 366, uh, 176, uh, 384, and 196. So definitely you are going to explore what? Pegaras. From the Pegaras, you see that the Bucharest is the next one. So you go into this particular direction. OK. Now comes a very interesting algorithm, and that is our the subject uh, that is that is more uh, important search algorithm for us. This search algorithm is called the A star search algorithm. How many of you already know about this algorithm? Is there anyone who knows about this algorithm? No one is telling yes. OK, so what I'm telling that I, I am going to have another search algorithm that I do implementation on. I do implemented and on and F. very good. So this is a, this is a very interesting algorithm. OK, a star algorithm. So a few minutes back I was telling that use the heuristic value to advance yourself. This algorithm says that only heuristic value is not good. Use the previous value also that how much you have till now invested. So GL tells that how much you have. If, for example, he into this particular place, if you are into the Cebu and from the Zarin to Cebu, you have actually uh, you spend it something. So if you want to get proceeded, you also use this particular information. OK, this information you also need to use. So this FN is going to use two things that is GN plus H and any question on that, any issues in that. OK, so definitely you can think that OK, um, if uh, if you use this particular method, it is going to be better. OK. OK, and uh, maybe you may be exploring the items into a different sequence. Earlier you were exploring the item into the different sequence, but by using this you are going to explore the item into different sequence. OK, so the same thing that I told you that expand the nodes in order of the increasing value of F value. A star is both optimal and complete. Complete means it if there is a solution, it gives you the solution. It is optimal means it. Uh, optimal because means it takes it does not explore. A lot of uh, number of nodes. OK. And this comes because of the two property. And uh, those properties are the admissibility and the consistency. So we would come back to this particular thing that what they mean. And. Uh, so. This property that the consistency property actually says that let's assume that you are on a particular node N, OK, and you are you want to go to the node M. OK, so you have to, you can go from here to here. OK, so the heuristic, uh, if you want to find out that how much you have actually. Uh, how much is the heuristic value on N? How much value of there on the M? So if you want to find out that what is the heuristic value on the value M? And want to compare this value with any other value. Any other value means let's assume that there is another node n and dash. And if you want to come to the m, there could be let's assume there is another path that you go into this way from n to n dash, and then you come over here. It may also be possible. How can you come to the m? Two ways, na? either you directly come to this particular node or you go to some other node and then you come. OK, so actually it says that if you go to the different path so how much you are going to spend you are going to actually uh, you are going to here you are going to spend this much this value but here along with this value one more value is going to be added and going from n dash to n to n dash 
this you can sometimes represent as that uh, there is a, some cost that if you go from n to n dash by taking an action a so you can tell this particular thing so if this is a cost you add to the to the n dash and you s compare that what is the actual cost that that is going to be incurred from here so this value is going to be lesser than this particular quantity means if you are going to come to the same place from the other places so you are going to be going to give me the larger values and uh, once again that if you, if you if you miss this particular part that what is this particular action so it may be possible that from n to n there could be multiple ways so using a action using b action using c action you can reduce to the same place so what action you are taking based on that i can say that this is the formulation that is say that if you if you come come from if you come directly you are going to spend lesser as compared to the other place and please note that this is not the path difference okay this is not the path path uh, that you are going to spend over there don't get confused by that it is the something something else that is something other information is coming to you for example the straight line difference and is for example let's assume that uh, what i wanted to tell i wanted to tell let the, let's assume that this is this is uh, this is one place okay this is one place this is another place and there is a bridge on there you are sitting let me draw into this particular way let me draw into this particular way let's assume that this is the land and this is also a land, okay. And there is a bridge between bridge between these two places, okay. If somebody is here and somebody is here, and uh, he want to go from here to here, and the distance is straight line. This dist distance is this, but actual distance is not like that, okay. Because he cannot go from here to here. He have to come here and then go here. So right now what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this straight line difference. Please try to understand this H is going to talk about this straight line difference, not the actual distance. Okay, so this is straight line distance says that if you go somewhere else and from there, if you go here, then this is an extra cost that you are going to make. So that's why I would be this particular value is going to be minimum as compared to the if you take the value from here and add this particular cost. So if you add this particular cost that going from here to here and from there, what is the straight line difference if you want to compare? So the direct straight line difference that is this value is going to be lesser than this. Make sense? Yes or no? Okay, good. Excellent. So uh, let us see the A star into the action. So the, this uh, this is a very interesting uh, slide that tells you that how A star works. So once again, uh, I told you that uh, it is going to consider two things that how much you have till now expanded and what is the H. So H value, let's assume that the same value, same value, straight line difference value uh, values are given to you. And if when you are R and to the Arad, you want to find out. So Arad has a value 366. Okay, this value. So with the 366 plus zero, what is this zero? This zero is means because you are starting. So it is zero. So from here, from Arad, you say that there are three places, Cebu, Timisora, and Zerin. There are three places you can go. Okay. You can see that Zerin, Cebu, and Timisora. And uh, Timisora is 118. So you Timisora is 118. Cebu is 140, Cebu is 140, and uh, Zarind is 75. And then what is this second number? This second is Zarind says that 374. So this is the number. Second number is 24329. That is for Timisora. 329. Where is Timisora? 329. Okay, 329. And uh, similarly, Cebu becomes 253. So using these thing, if you find out the summation, you see that which is the minimum one. The minimum in one is a Cebu. This is the minimum one. So you are going to next time you are going to expand this thing. Once again, try to understand that if you expand the Cebu, where is the Cebu? This. So there are Fegaras, Valkia, Oradia, and Arad. These are the four places that you can go. Okay. But Arad, you just forget about this because again it is going to come. But let us just consider that what is the value. No, no problem. So four values are there. So you can see that 
everybody you plus tell first tell me that one two three four values you understand these four values you understand yes or no yes okay okay good so till Cebu, how much you have ex expand extended this 140 you have already expanded uh, ex expanded 140 you have already expanded so so if you want to go to arad okay so let him let me find out once again from cbu what is the value of arad so if you understand this thing everything would be clear to you from cbu you want to find out that how much would be the arad so this value is going to be 280 plus 336 what is this 336 this is the second part second part comes from where from this particular table 336 everybody okay from where this 180 is coming 180 is coming because how much how much you have spent to come to Cebu 140 this much okay you have spent this 140 when you came to this particular place 140 okay yes or no and from here if you go to the Arad once again you have uh, because you came to this Cebu Cebu you again go to the Arad so 140 is again going to be added so it is 140 plus 140 and therefore 280 is written over here everybody okay or not that's why 280 plus 336 is it okay just say yes okay let us try to find out for the figure s for the figure s what was there so 140 you have spent it for coming to this particular cebu this particular part and after cebu you have to go to the figure s so where is the figure s figure s is here so 99 you have to add more so 140 plus 99 so how much it is 239 so you can see that 239 plus plus 176 is what is 176 search for the figure 176 you understand this thing yes or no similarly i give you the homework that please find out that what are these values and after that uh, when you explore these things you can see that uh, i give you the homework please solve this by yourself that uh, what is these values so you see what six four six four one five six seven one four one three minimum is four one three so you are going to expand this thing once again so uh, next three places again you find out into the same way and you see that a minimum is uh, five two six four one seven and this so you again you see that once again the algorithm says that what are the value the values are five two six four one seven three five five three these are the early, earlier values you see that looks like that five four one five was here and which is lesser than any of these values so now again you even it was expanded but now you would expand this particular part it is going to expand it is find out that cebu and bucharest and since bucharest has been explored you are going to stop at this particular moment okay no, no, no. I think I we have to go to the Bucharest. Uh... Okay, do you understand? So this is how you find out the path using a star algorithm. So I I suggest strongly suggest you that you by yourself find out do the computation of all these things and see that how you are going to explore the items one by one. now let us see the what about uh, what is uh, the optimality what is the proof for the optimality of this thing and this proof actually uh, relies on the idea that we have actually already discussed that uh, if you want to find out that uh, what is the h value on a particular node so if there is another node that is uh, that may be some value so you have to find out that how much cost you are going to in infer using yunker if you add that particular part so this value is going to be larger than the any in this particular value now you must understand that value of f is non decreasing along the path what is f f was the summation of g of n plus h of h of n okay so what was there based on the value of f you are actually exploring the things what i'm telling that if on a graph if you if you find out that what are the h values of all these uh, f values are for all these 
not the HF. OK, F values are of all these nodes. If, let's assume that you started from here, you reach to this particular place. And these are the nodes in between. So. If you find out the F value here, here, here and here, they are going to increase. How can I tell? The idea is this that let's assume that you are on some node and dash. OK, you are on some node and dash. And thus uh, the actual scenario is this that you are on the N, then you reach to the N dash. OK, so what is the value of F of N dash? Let me find out and compare with the value of Fn. OK, what I'm telling that Fn is going to be less than Fn dash, or I'm going to tell that Fn dash is actually greater than or equal to Fn. This is the thing I, I'm telling. Yes or no? We are going to see the proof. This is the thing I'm going to tell you, tell to you. So let us deep dive into the proof. So Fn is equal to Gn plus Hn. This is the definition. OK. OK, so. What is Gn? What is Gn? This particular quantity is that you have spanned something to how much you have expanded to this particular by reaching to this particular thing. So it is going to be that you reach to the N, then spend something something extra to reach from N to N dash. If you want to reach to N dash from the N. So you first you have to come to N. That is going to be the GN. Then you have to spend something to reach N, N dash. That is going to cost of going from N to N dash using an action A. Make sense? Make sense? Yes or no? This part is clear. Hello, sir. Yeah, this part is clear. OK, so uh, let me just clear this. If this part is clear, just see the ever formula. This is the same value. This is the same value. So if instead of these thing, if I put HN, it will be less than equal to. Anna? Instead of this thing, if I put HN, GN, let the GN be the same. So this is greater than the so so this value becomes smaller. And what is this? This is FN by definition. So FN is actually less than FN dash, which is the next next point. So it is going to be monotonically increasing. OK. And uh, one more thing that uh, that when by this algorithm that we have designed actually divide uh, actually that we have. Uh, devised. Pan the nodes in the order of optimal path. This is the I need not to tell anything, but somebody want any kind of proof. He can read this because this is the algorithm. OK, the algorithm says that optimal ways I'm going to use the minimum value to to expand the thing. These slides need more details about the algo. Look, there is no much. Uh, let me tell you that Nikhil try to understand the higher level idea. OK, there is nothing more, nothing hidden over here. Only algorithm is very simple that you find out the you expand the node based on the FN and where FN is equal to GN plus HN. That's that's it. The algorithm. What else I can write? What are the properties of these things I'm discussing? Nikhil, this is the only thing. Okay, what can I tell much about the this algorithm? So I was telling that uh, this uh, uh, algorithm is such that that in order of uh, nodes are uh, one by one expanded in order of the optimal path. Optimal path means based on this value. How can I prove the completeness of A star? So because I have seen that F value is going to increase only. So if I start from any of the node, maybe my F value would be something. 
I don't know, but let's assume that my F value is something. After that, what would happen? That if I go to the any other node, my F value is going to increase. After that, what is going to happen? My F value is going again going to increase. Okay. So I can create some kind of contours. Contour means the value in this in this uh, circle. All the nodes have the value lesser than or equal to the some someone who is on the boundary. So if I keep expanding it, I know that I can I can expand this only in this particular way. So at the end, what is going to happen? That all the when all the items would be there, there would be some maximum value. So by this, I can tell that before reaching to the maximum value, I would be somewhere I would be able to confine my final state also. So it means what? It means what? That I would be able to find out the solution. Make sense? Mm, there is somebody is writing A is equal to cost to reach from N to N dash. No, no, A is an action. OK, if you have any confusion, a few minutes back, I told you that if end to end dash, if you want to reach, so you can go from this path, you can go from this path, you can go from this path also. So let me call it A, B, C. So A, A means that using what action I'm going to reach. Sir, please say once again your last statement. OK. So what about the last statement here? Saurabh, you want to ask here? Last statement here. So I was telling that that F is going to increase. So here some value would be there, then some value would be there, then some value would be there. I can create some kind of contour that contains all these items one by one. I can create the contour that is going to increase and take all the items. At the time when I'm going to cover all the items, this would have some value. Let's assume that it is a maximum value. Before that, somewhere here or here, I would be having what? My uh, my solution also. So I would be able to reach that particular point. So it means that I would be able to find out my, uh, my solution. And this is the proof for the completeness. Uh, very important thing is that the time complexity of this algorithm is uh, order of b to the power is silent d. Okay. So what is this b to the power is silent d? Time complexity is order of b is a branching factor. Okay. And if silent d, b to the power if silent d. What is this epsilon? Epsilon actually what happens now into the into the graphical thing actually we have a big issue that uh, from uh, one state uh, from one uh, place to another place if there is a distance distance of 30 units. So 30 means there is some unit that is going to be counted as a 30. OK, are you able to see if I say that 30 mile and 30 kilometer they are different, but in the both the cases I'm telling 30. So value is 30. But the unit is different. What is the unit? So let's assume that this unit is going to be epsilon. OK, and what is the diff D? Then if, if I know that what is the unit, then I can tell that how many time it is like that. So if silent day is nothing more than this, that it is going to tell that uh, in essence, they are going to tell that what is the distance. So if the branching factor is B, every time you are going to explore more B, more items. So Time complexity is going to be this because all these items which you have actually ex expanded, you are going to sp spend some time to at least put them into your uh, working memory. OK, so this is what the time. And this is very high. And because of this, it may be possible that uh, sometime it may be difficult. OK. To execute. So memory requirement is very high. How can I reduce? So IDA asterisk, IDA asterisk algorithm that tells again you apply the iterative deepening of the thing. So here 
again the same concept is being introduced that we have talking about the uh, earlier that uh, that we are going to tell that uh, a star is again not going to explore all the things it is going to only explore something to the depth l treated deepening you can apply Okay. Uh, the same idea is that uh, in terms of the BFS, uh, DFS, you can apply this thing. And similarly, the recursive best first search you can also apply that here you can apply some kind of BFS kind of approach to make it faster. Uh, actually, RB, this uh, recursive best first search actually says that whatever value I have seen earlier, I am also going to provide you when I am going to explore the items. So this gives an opportunity that if into the current queue I see something that is um, th that are actually very costly, and if I have the information that till now the best is actually this much, so I would not explore my current path. Do you understand this particular point? So if I some play, if, if somebody tells me that, look, uh, there is a shop where you can purchase the tea for the 10 rupees, and then you are exploring so the various places to find out that how much, what is the cost of tea? Nobody is telling you 10, everybody is telling 15 rupees, 20 rupees, 30 rupees. So you not buy anybody because you have this information that uh, till now minimum was 10 rupees. So why should I go into this particular direction? The same idea is here. RBFS algorithm says that initially, till now I don't know, but from the Arad it explore, explores, for example, that uh, Cebu, Timisora, Zarind, whatever value we have earlier seen that into the previous thing, 393, 447, 449, that is the addition of the distance and everything. So you see that the, this is the minimum one, okay, 390, three you are exploring going to explore into this particular idea however the previous value pre in the next uh, minimum value you are going to also supply over here 447 so with the cebu two values are available that because because it's a minimum so i'm going to explore the things from here but i know that till now minimum is 447 okay uh, Herschel is telling that uh, heuristic function is a kind of uh, guide for the BFS. For example, cost of moving the Bangalore would be higher from Agra. If you want to go to Zammu, now it's the function would be calculating distance or the distance in a way like metro, airport, train, road. So uh, Herschel, these things are going to come into the more detail today. Okay, just for wait because till now we um, uh, with the background that we have, I can only tell you that it's a uh, straight line distance. Okay. But we are going to see in the more detail. Okay, you can you can access the PDF. More, more things are going to come. So what this algorithm is that uh, I am going to explore the minimum one, but the second minimum is also going to be provided to me. So but when I explore this, I find out six four six five four one five four one five is lesser than four four seven. So definitely I would not go explore this one. I would explore this one better. Then six seven one, then four three one. Uh, four three one is even lesser than four one five. I would explore these things, but when I explore this, I find five two six four one seven and five five three. So the minimum is four one seven. You can see that here the minimum was four one five. So why I am going to explore? Why would I explore this particular path? I would go back and explore this particular path, and this is what the idea is. I would go back, explore this thing, and then. Explore then again, it may be possible that when I actually, this was the 415 because of some kind of assumptions, na? but this could not be the actual way. When I explored, I find out 591 and 450. Again, I'm, I will have to come back and explore the same thing once again. <laughs> you can see, I have to come back here and explore the same thing once again. And then I was able to find out the Bucharest with the 418. Again, once again, this, I call you that please uh, read this algorithm and interesting algorithm and try to understand this idea every time second highest is also being fed to the system if some if if these values are 
actually larger than the second highest. I would go to the second highest. And here when I come here, the second la largest is 417. When I expanded everything, I find out that they, these values are larger than 417. I again come back to the same person, same place and explore the things once again. Sir, why 447 also to be so, so it is the second minimum? Yeah, so look minimum I'm exploring. So I also keep track that who is the second minimum and this is the, actually I can uh, I was telling now the minimum value across the remaining ones. So if here I see that things are, for example, into this particular case, it happened. So when I supplied the 415 to this thing, it was after spending, you find out that every value is actually larger than 415. So it it actually dropped this particular area, come back again, explore this particular thing and saw, but here again, because this value is, is not going to be the guaranteed. So now it says that uh, 591, he, he call you that I'll give you the 10, 10 rupees to 11 rupees, but now he's asking for some more charges, hidden charges, uh, GST and etc. Now you have to pay 16 rupees. So you come back there, you find out, no, no, it becomes more than that. You again come back here and now you exp expanded this thing. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rudranil is telling that it seems like to be DFS more than the BFS. I also agree because what happens now? A star is uh, inherently actually it is uh, DFS. Okay. But uh, B, it is uh, going to use the concept of BFS because the side by things are also here. So sometime you go into the side side by things. This is the only addition that we have. Okay, A star is DFS. Okay, so the next idea is this: that sometime what happens that uh, since you know that A star actually um, a, while while exploring the A star, you are in the DFS. You are using all these things. Many things you don't put into the memory. Uh, whatever is going to explode into a particular path, you are going to store that into your place. So sometimes it may be possible that you can store more things into the place. And this is called the memory bound A star algorithm. It says that it's it's memory bound uh, uh, SM. A star algorithm that tells that uh, so what happens now? Uh, you are you are actually adding the things over here, okay? and uh, you are adding the things over here so what happens if uh, if the memory is full if the memory is full so you know that you are going to consider the things into the increasing order only so if the memory is full so the items which have the very large value you can drop some of them and to to accommodate new values make sense so if you allow to drop items, worst leaf nodes. Worst leaf nodes means the items which have the largest value of F. So you can drop them. I'm not going to use them. Okay. So this is uh, so. This is not a direct solution, but uh, sometimes heuristic based solution. It is that you are. Um, to the problem, but one solution is this that uh, initially you are going to put multiple things. Initially, it is going to use the little memory, but after that, uh, when it goes deep down, a lot of things are there. Even if you want to put uh, more items over here and your space is not available, then drop the things which are actually bad. This algorithm is called the SMA star. So, the, all these ideas are there. Because of example, I don't know where it is right choosing the DFS or BSA along the heuristic depends on the situation for the shortest path where goal situation is known. It has to be BFS. Goal situation is known, it has to be BFS. Uh, 
Uh, sir, I was I was asking uh, answering Rudranil. So you were saying like this seems like DFS more than DFS to me. So I was saying uh, for uh, because we don't know like where is the goal, right? We just we just calculating like um, like we don't know the exact location, like directions or all those factors. So hmm. if well, we if we uh, yeah, yeah yeah yes. So yeah. that's why uh, we don't. Uh, we have to search in some ways. In some cases, we know the answer. As uh, for example, into the uh, I gave the example of uh, that water jack problem. We know that what is the final answer, and then we have to find out that what is the way. That was a more important. But some cases, I mean, many of the cases we don't know. Okay, today we would see those few more example, very elegant example. Okay, so, okay. Now we want to discuss something that is a very interesting idea that learning to search better. uh to search better means what what do i mean by to search so different method that we have used, that we have seen dfs bfs a star and different variation of this algorithm they are they are the methods to search okay so can we decide design something that how to search better can we design something? Okay, so the idea is this. Idea is actually very, very uh, different kind of idea. So few minutes back, everybody, please tell me that you know that what is the state space? You know that what is the state space? Okay, so state space uh, means all the possibilities. Okay, so. In the every state is in the state space, states are there. Okay, if I say that a state I on the state I, I what I can take some actions because I take the action, then I take uh, actions could be I take the left and right and or whatever. And if when I take an action, a j, I take an action j for the possible j actions. If I take any kind of actions, so uh, so. Something I wrote, but it is not appearing on the screen. Yeah. So if I take the action J, then what happens? That my state changes to something as K. This is this is what is going to happen. So if I put actions to each of the states, just think that initially what was there? S1, S2, S3, S4, S4, S5. And there was there was some there was some connection, and on this connection it was written that uh, take zero or one or one or zero something like that. Now I am telling that s one zero, s one one, s two zero, s two one, s three zero, s three one, s four zero, s four one. S five zero, S five one. I can I can write I can create more st states. So earlier if the states were uh, n, now I have n multiplied by a number of states. Yes or no? I am going to make something different. So how many states into this particular settings are n multiplied by a? Say yes or no. Yes or no. Please let me know if you don't understand. Nobody is speaking. Am I able? Am I audible? Harshal, please explain again, sir. OK, so I am going to explain again, OK? Please tell me, Harshal. One thing is this, that let's assume that I have a S1. On 0, it goes to S2. On 1, it goes to S3. S3 on 0, it goes to remain on the same. And 1 is go to here. On 1, it remains here. And on 0, it goes to Let's assume 0 is go to here. Let's assume that this is the state diagram. How many states are there? 
three states. So S1, if I say that S10, S11, S20, S21, S30, S31. If I can I write like this and I tell that these are the new states. I'm telling that these are the new states. Now earlier there was S1, S2 were a state. I'm telling that these are the states. Understand? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So this is called the meta level meta level state space. This is called the meta level space state space. And now assume these to be lying anywhere into the space. Assume that these things are lying into in anywhere into the space. OK, they are lying anywhere into the space. They are lying anywhere into the space. OK. These are the space. And uh, also without loss of generality, I can tell that I can I can write that. Uh, let's assume that uh, let's assume that this is the initial state. And this is the final state. There is no problem on that. Yes or no? Any, any anyone could be. Huh? OK, now. Just say yes, I'm going to tell a very interesting thing. OK, OK. All right. All right. Now I wanted to tell from here you can draw a line like this. From here you can draw the line like this. From here you can draw the line like this. From here you can draw the line because you have to start from here. Draw like this. Draw like this. Draw like this. Draw like this. Can you draw the line like this? That from here you you go to here then here. From here you go here then here. From here you go here and here. From here you go here and here. So it is a search strategy that gives you that from here you go here, then here you reach to the final state. OK, all these things are new search strategies. These in this way you have actually explored the states. You have explored the states in this way. From this state you explore this, then explore this state, then this state. So. S1 you take zero, you reach to S2, S1, S1 you take zero, you reach you S1, here you take one, you reach to S2, here you take one, you reach here, something like that. How we define the final state? So I'm not defining. Let's assume there would be some final state. Huh? Okay. Whatever the final state depends upon the problem. Okay, problem would define that who is the final and who is the initial. But this is a search strategy. This is a strategy that actually gives you the nodes into this particular way. Another such strategy that gives the nodes into this particular way. So this kind of thing, then uh, any kind of uh, method that you can come up with is going to give you a search strategy. So by this, you can define the different different kind of search strategies. This just gives an idea that how to create multiple things on that. All these things are computational steps and by combining them, we can learn that how the new searching strategies can be def can be developed. What you want initially st initial state immediately you go to there. Don't explore anything else, but it is not possible. So sometime you have to go into this way or sometime if possible you go into this way. How to all these things are going to give you a different algorithm. How to make algorithm for that is again a different question. But this actually gives you the idea that different kind of algorithms can be created. So one very weird kind of idea that I'm going to tell. OK. One one very weird kind of idea I'm going to tell. Let's assume that S number of states were there, A number of actions were there. Then you choose two to the power S into a different a subset of this item. And each of them you can permutate then. Permutate. You can apply a permutation on them. Each of each of them are going to represent a way in which you can find out from one place to another. OK, so this many number of algorithms actually searching mechanism you can develop. But we don't know how to develop each of them. So a lot of them are there. Lot of searching mechanisms could be there, which are going to explore the items into a different way. 
so uh, uh, i'm going to talk about this particular problem that is a eight puzzle problem we have seen earlier also and uh, let us try to build some kind of heuristic function here and learn some basic things about that so how to build the heuristic function you know that a star is a very good algorithm and uh, then we have seen that uh, into the map case it was going to give me the straight line dist distance so how can I find find out the straight line distance over here where it is a different kind of problem heuristic? It is a eight puzzle problem. How can I find out a straight line difference here? So we are going to see this in more detail and uh, we have seen this algorithm that uh, if there, there is some start states and then we want to reach to this particular goal is state. Every solution cost is around 22 steps. Somebody has actually find out. OK, branching factor is around two. So if you are here, your blank space is here, so then you can move at two places. If you are here, you can move it four places. If you are here, you can move with three places. On an average, it is three. So uh, three to the power uh, 22, because in 22 steps you are going to do something, it number of states becomes very large. But we have seen that actually uh, in into the previous classes that it is going to be for, for a factorial nine by two different states are there. So even this is a very large number. So how to find, create a heuristic function? So let me give two heuristic functions and which are just a general weird idea. One is the number of misplaced titles. One idea is number of misplaced titles. So here in this particular example, uh, two has function. The one has function H1 is number of misplaced titles. I don't know that why it is taking time. Number of misplaced tiles. So whether, whether seven is misplaced? Seven should be here. Nah? Seven should be here. Seven is here. So yes, this is misplaced. Okay, this is misplaced. Two is misplaced. Yes. Four is misplaced. Yes. Five is misplaced. Yes. Six is misplaced. Yes. Eight is misplaced. Yes. Three is misplaced. Yes. Three should be where? Three should be here. Misplaced. One is misplaced. So what is this H1? What is the value of H1? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Let me define another hash function. Sum of the distance of the tile from their goal position. Distance of the tiles from their goal position. This could be an another heuristic function. And uh, since they cannot move along the diagonals, so distance would involve horizontal and vertical moves. OK, so this is precisely called the Manhattan distance or city block distance. So uh, I wanted to find out that what is the distance um, H2 H2. So who are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. They are misplaced. I have to find out that what is their city block distance from their original distance. OK, so Sal, help me help me to find out. I'm bad in that. So if seven is here, seven need to be here. So one, two, three, three moves I need. Am I right? Yes or no? Seven needs three moves. Similarly, two, how many moves it moves? Two, two need to be here. It is here. So one. So for the two, it is one. OK, for the four, four need to be here. Four need to be here. So one, two, four is going to be two. For this five, five should be here. So one, two, five should be two. This six, six should be here. So one, two, three, six. For the six, it is three. For eight, eight is a one, two. So eight is two. And uh, for three, three should be here. So one, two, three is two. For this one, one should be here. So one, two, three. One is three. So can anybody find out that what is the value of H? Three. So is the value 18? Total is 18. Okay. Yes, sir. So in this way, we can define our heuristic function. One way to define this heuristic function. Out of these two heuristic functions, we must try to understand that which one is better? OK, two functions are there. OK, minimum distance right to place the title in proper place. Yeah, yeah, city in this example, Nikhil, I'm going to find out that what is the city block or Manhattan distance. OK, 
this value represent the Manhattan distance, okay, not the minimum one. So this is given by the H. Okay, so right now I have given you two functions. So definitely you would ask, sir, which is better? Which should I use? So the idea is this, that we must have to find out the effective branching factor. Effective branching factor means if I am here, I am going to explore something. So what is the number of nodes that I am going to explore? That is called the B, but I don't know the actual value of B. Let me call it B asterisk. B asterisk is the effective branching factor. So if the B asterisk is lower, I am going to be better. Am I right? Because if I explore lesser number of nodes, then I would be more happier. What do you want? You want to explore lesser na, and reach to get the answer, then you would be quickly able to get the answer. So uh, branching factor could be defined, uh, for example, if the solution is at the disk depth D. So initially you start with the first node, then you get the B asterisk other node, then from every B asterisk node give you B square, then they gives you B cube number of node. At the depth D, you actually explore these many number of nodes. This should be equal to total number of nodes that you have, okay? Because n number of nodes you have explored plus one for our answer. So this should be equal to this thing. If I if I know that how many number of nodes are generated, I put I can put into this particular formulation, and then I can find out that what is the value of B asterisk, and by this I can tell the the strategy which have lesser number of B asterisk, it is going to be better. Does, does it make sense? Yes or no? Yes or no? Does it make sense? Once again, so let's assume that I'm going to, because ultimately we are going to explore something. Yes or no? I'm going to explore. I'm going to explore something. So from here, how many nodes are getting exposed? B asterisk. From there, B asterisk more nodes. From there, B asterisk more nodes are going to be explored. Okay. So I don't know that what is the value of B asterisk. If the value of B asterisk is lesser, I'm going to explore with respect to these strategies. If any of the strategy is going to give me the lesser number of uh, lesser value of B asterisk, that would be better. Yes or no? Lesser value are better because it is going to give me the lesser number of nodes. I would be quickly able to find out the things. Now, if I if the branching factor is B asterisk and the solution is at the depth D, then how many nodes I am going to explore? This many number of nodes I can explore. Everybody is okay with that because at the level one, one node is there. Next, the B asterisk would be there. Every one are going to give me B asterisk more. So B asterisk square nodes would be there in the next level B asterisk cube, then B asterisk to the power D. This is the total number of nodes that I'm going to explore. Okay. So I can, I can, if I know somehow that what is the value of N, then I can find out some by solving, interpolating something that I can find out using mathematical uh, tools that what is the value of B asterisk? Yes or no? Let me do an experiment. Just say yes or no. Then I would come to this particular slide. Yes. Yeah, good. Now let me come to this particular side. A star algorithm is run on the 1200 random problems with the solution of length 2 to 24. So you know that there could be some problem where solution is two steps. There could be a problem where solution is four step, six step, eight step, ten step. You know that now. Nah? You I can I can create this. I can from the zero I can create that. Now the solution is at the desk ten only. Solution is twelve only, fourteen only. So I can create various such problems. Are you able to understand? How can I create a thing that can have the depth of two? Just slides two things. Now the solution is at the two depth. Okay. Yes or no? Two steps is needed now. Nah? You just make it bad by two steps. Okay. For each of the cases, I am going to create hundred such cases. Hmm? And I am going to run the algorithm. Which algorithm? IDS algorithm, iterative deepening algorithm, and A star with the H1, A star with the H2. Yes. 
I am going to run a star with the H1. I am going to use this H1 function. I am going to use H2 function and try to explore that how many try to see that how many nodes are explored with the IDS. These many number of nodes are going to be explored. These many number comes into my um, frontier with the A star with the H1 613. These many number of nodes are going to be exposed that are generated with the A star with the H2. These many numbers are actually explored few minutes back. We have seen that there is a mathematical formulation. If you solve it, we can find out the value of B. Find out the value of B for the A star. It comes out to be these values for A2. It comes out to be this value. You can see that 0 0.45, 0 0.25, 0 0.46, 26, 27, 28, 26. See that it gets kind of stabilized. 1.5, it is something like 1.5. 1.5, it is 1.26. Can you please uh, relative to puzzle state? Can we be can we be relative to the puzzle state? Uh, once again, uh, states you understand? Padmavati states you understand? Yes or no? That all the all the any any permutation factorial nine by two permutations we have. Okay, these many number of states we have you understand now i am telling i am going to use this as heuristic method and this heuristic methods both of them i am going to solve and uh, initially what i say that if it is like this if i slide one over here and two over here the problem becomes something like this three four five six seven eight and one two blank okay so how, what is the depth of the solution two i know so I can create multiple. For example, I can take it up, take it up. I can take only one up and then take it here. So 100 problems I have created where I know the solution is into the depth two. Similarly, 100 problem I have created where the solution is the depth four, depth 16, depth 18. I have solved using IDS and A star with the H1 and H2. Try to see that how many nodes are going to be explored. Using the formula, I find out that what is the effective branching factor. It comes out to be one nearly one point and one point two six. Now my question is Padmavati, is it fine? Do you understand this? Everybody, do you understand this? Please let me know, OK? So that I can explain and save me from unnecessary repeating. Otherwise, I keep repeating the thing. It looks like that <laughs> you do not understand. I keep repeating. OK. Now my question is which method is better H1 or H2? Just write one or two. Which heuristic method is better one or two? Nobody is writing two. Two. OK, two body S2 is better. Yeah, S2 is better because it has the lesser value of lesser value of branching factor. S2 is better than H1. It is better to use a heuristic function with the larger values. Understand? So how come these came? Actually, if you go to the more deeper analysis of the things. OK. So you find out that actually they are going to represent a relaxed problem. They are these these heuristics are actually going to map to some kind of relaxed problem. What do I mean by relaxed problem? Relaxed problem is this that I say that. Uh, for example, if you if you want to put the seven at the right place, you have to take it here, here and here. Three steps you have to take. But if I tell that OK, you can fly, it can fly and come back here. This is a relaxed problem. I uh, it has lesser uh, restrictions. It can fly and immediately can come here. If I can apply this kind of relaxations, then H1 would give you the exact number of steps. This H1 would give you the exact number of steps. Okay. Title could uh, if I say that the tile could move anywhere. I mean it can fly and can move anywhere in one step. So it would give the exact number of steps to find out the solution. So it is a relaxed problem. OK, I'm telling them giving the relaxations. 
another thing relaxation i can give the city block one that tile can move one square in any direction even if the, it is occupied one it can go in that particular direction if i put this relaxation then also it would be easy to make because if i give you two from here to here if i want to ask you that how to make you can take it here 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 and here right now you cannot take the seven down because five is here but if I allow that, okay, okay, on the same place, two things can come. It can go in any direction. So it is a relaxation. So you come here, then here, then here. You can seven would be here. Similarly, three can come here and here. So it would be easy. So with this relaxation, it is a another kind of H2. Now H2 is this kind of relaxation. So do you uh, understand both of these relaxation? Okay. So if you if you visualize this on the original graph, so original graph means just see that is state space graph, whatever was there. So here few short circuit would be there because earlier from this state to this state, you cannot come now because of this restriction, you can come to this place to this place. So the new graph is going to be simpler and finding out the solution would be easy. Solution in the original problem space would work for the relaxed setting. OK, and however, there could be a better solution into the relaxed setting means having the lower cost, very easy solutions. OK, so sometime you can define once again what I'm going to tell once again that from the original problem, if you have a original problem on this problem, you define multiple relaxed problems. And with the relaxed problem, find out that how, what is the solution because now finding out the solution on the relaxed problem setting is easy. So you find out that what is the value and this value is going to give you your heuristic function. Multiple heuristic functions you can use. You, you can combine them by taking the max of those values. All these things are possible. So I told you one way to make the heuristic function. What is that way? That you relax the problem. OK, so one better way is this that uh, one one another sub problem way could be this that I say that uh, if I if I want to. If I want to solve this particular problem, forget about these numbers, OK, just focus on one, two, three and four. If you can solve one, two, three and four for me. Means you put the one, two, three, four into the right place. I say that you have reached to the solution. This is another small modification. OK, so for every kind of this particular problem, if you want to go to here. So I can create if, if I do like this now, it would be easy for me to create a database of all the problems because now the number of possibilities are going to be lesser. So I can create a small table. One, two, four, three, four table where I'm going to put the problem state and how many steps is required to get the solution. I can create this table. And I can use this table to work as a heuristic function. Similarly, I can one, two, three, four, then who is stopping me to make four, six, seven, eight also. I'm going to make one more table where four, six, seven, eight. I'm going only going to consider four, six, seven, eight, correct them only. Then who is going to stop me to add these two, two values to find out the better heuristic one? OK. However, there is an issue because when you are going to arrange one, two, one, four, three, one at that time, you would also be moving these things. OK, so if you add these two values, there could be an issue that you are double counting some of the moves. So therefore, the function becomes wrong. So one way could be that you change this particular function and tell that, OK, I'm only going to uh, in in this in this this value is going to be only those value when I'm moving two four three one. Earlier I was telling that how many steps are required, but now I'm telling that I'm only counting those steps when I'm moving two four three one. In between to move these two four three one, I also need to move, move these things. But those I'm not counting. If I say that those I'm not counting right now. So. Uh, so this is another way. So if you do this, then uh, the double counting problem actually you can eradicate and then you can add. Then you can add uh, these things together. 
it's a very interesting way because now you uh, your space is uh, very little and in this space you can uh, add the values okay and and you can you can very easily find out the solution and then add the values and then you would be able to sail through to find out the solution next idea is uh, actually some more interesting thing it says that can you apply some machine learning methods that can tell that uh, what is the value of heuristic from here to here so maybe some of the things for example some of the some of the cases you see that how many steps is required to solve and uh, and a sufficiently large number of board positions you actually manually solve and tell that these many number of steps steps and then you again go to the machine learning and uh, feed this thing and this thing and try to find out that uh, what is the number of way then a new board position comes you ask from the machine learning model that uh, give me the value this could be another way uh, there is a herschel is writing bo but both previous h1 and h2 of them looks like are not applicable alone here right uh, saving states if we know how to do this from here is optimization but we need to know the shortest path right so uh, harshal let me tell you that uh, in the deep in in the in the artificial intelligence domain we want to be better many of the time we are not interested in finding out the best solution do you understand this if you are intelligent person you are doing intelligent task yeah, when i am telling something you are listening something you are able to understand that whether it is a perfect way of um, understanding the thing no we want to find out the solution okay our task is to find out the solution if the number of steps are minimum then it is very good otherwise in many of the cases you may not be able to solve that particular problem so <clears throat> absolute minimum is actually the the point of algorithmic people okay they want to do the things into the absolute minimum here into the ml into the artificial intelligence domain we our interest is not like that we want to solve the problem in absolute minimum we want to find out the solution in an admin admissible way and uh, these methods actually help us to do that makes sense so yeah yeah makes sense so sir the two heuristic functions that we got uh, with two different approaches right that whatever was discussed so we are going to use both of them and kind of uh, utilize both of them while we are as i told you no no as i told you that you use either one this one or this one i am going to i am giving you two uh, heuristic functions so that later i can compare that which one is better and you can find out uh, something like that in the previous example in a star uses only single hash functions single single uh, yeah, heuristic function it uses only single heuristic function here more functions are not needed however i has also we have also discussed about a method that was this that actually try to see that if multiple heuristic function are there how can we combine their values does it make sense actual algorithm would use a single heuristic function multiple heuristic functions are there so i can build a heuristic function on top of that and that would be used by the algorithm okay, okay. right now our discussion is that because multiple heuristic heuristic function we can one discussion was this how to come up with the heuristic function so the idea was that you are going to create the relaxed problem sets okay you going to create the relaxed problem sets using relaxed problem sets you can create the different kind of things and then you can create the different kind of functions so that we were talking about okay right now what i'm talking about that sometime you can take the learning approach also machine learning approach also given something you tell me that what is the value of h so you can apply some kind of machine learning approaches where it is actually trying to find out the feature and then maybe using feature their linear combination i would not not go into the machine learning domain right now because otherwise we, we are going to skip uh, we are going to the entangled direction but you can apply some ml methods also to find out that what is the value of heuristic 
make sense okay so search we have seen a lot but um, um, but sometimes we want to be want to go beyond the uh, searching uh, mechanism because uh, because sometime what happens uh, things are not that much systematic for example eight queens problems okay eight queens problems so things are not sequential means uh, you put the first one or second one or third one doesn't make any uh, difference if you want to for example you want to do the integrated circuit design is there any sequence on which you are going to proceed factory floor layout planning job shop scheduling means in jobs in which order you should take them automatic programming telecommunication network optimization vehicle routing problem portfolio management you want a solution you cannot tell that from this solution to this solution i'm going to do going to go into this way very difficult sometimes it is very difficult to define okay in these are in these scenarios the idea is to go for the local search algorithm the idea is to go for the local search algorithm and the, they make the things locally better and at the end you get the better solution okay so they have multiple advantages also because you are looking into the local area so they uses very little memory as compared to the big things okay and their space is not uh, infinite because uh, it's local only for example here uh, it's a kind of uh, weird example that try to say that let's assume that uh, there is some objective function that you want to find out that minimize some value and here is some state space again there is a problem that how can you tell that from this state to this state it is going to be near but this graph you may have seen earlier also that try to say that uh, you are going to get uh, you you want to reach at this particular place where you are going to get the global minimum but there could be local minimum you could be stuck at this particular point there could be shoulders means here you can see that very difficult to make any progress because all the values are of the same thing okay flat generally the flat surface where there is a local minima so maxima so difficult to find out these kind of scenarios into the local scenarios and especially this uh, this is the kya kahenge this is the uh, this image has been taken from a uh, very recent research paper they try to show that what is the last land landscape how the things are actually changing so you can see that he, if you are here you can see that the you can reach to the dip but if you are here you would be stuck into this particular place so different it, it, this is the last means this is the last that you have so here the last is very high you don't want to be here you want to reach here because it's a global minima but how can you reach it because if you reach it here you can see that you are trapped into this particular location if you are here you can drop down and you can reach here you can say that oh i have reduced this error this much but still you are not into the local minima and even if you are here you you randomly start from here you reach here you can tell that i have reduced the error only this much but this is better than the this reduction because here you are at the higher point things are challenging one very interesting algorithm that comes to our rescue is called the hill climbing search hill climbing search what it says it says that you see the neighborhood region if you are here you see the neighborhood region evaluate them and pick the one which is going to have the optimal value go into that particular direction in the local neighborhood you evaluate all the points and then proceed to that direction which has the optimal value and then again here you explore for example this uh, diagram this you know the famous uh peak can anybody name name it everest so if you want to go to the everest you just be here see what is nearby 
all the places you see that looks like that this place is more promising this place is more promising you keep climbing on that you would be able to reach to this particular point okay so initially you formulate the problem and see that where you are current the highest value successor of the current you try to find out means this involves that uh, evaluating all of them and finding out that who is the neighbor if the neighbor value is actually lesser than the current value means uh, no no the best one is actually lesser than me so you are into the uh, everywhere nearby items are actually lesser than you then you reply your answer because you are on the top and you get out of the loop otherwise you update your position to the neighbor one you go to this particular place and uh, you keep going up and up very interesting algorithm 